it take for people to listen, Dylan? What? Tell me. To have a pair of ears and try to listen. A pair of ears that aren't clogged up with fucking wax and grease. All right? And the will to say, I want to learn. What's so hard about that? It's not. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. All right, we're almost done removing our, uh, you might call it front end, you know, so, uh, front end strut assembly. And the last and final thing that we need to do, give me a camera, bud. And the last and final thing that we need to do is what, Dylan? Take, take off the... We need to take the lower A-frame control arm off. Exactly. That in itself is a fucking cocksucker, bud. Okay, what we're going to use to remove these bolts, we're going to use our impact, but we got a special adapter here. This is a wobble head adapter, and when you're using anything bigger than a 3 8 adapter, it's very important to always use one that's got a locking pin on it. And if you look right here, can you give me a screwdriver, please? A little, here's one right here. And what you want to do is you want to push that pin in and push the socket in at the same time, lining it up to lock the socket in place because the high torque and the uh, high RPM speed that this thing's traveling will fly off of here and hit you in the face. So then we will get up under here like this and Dylan's going to be checking our jack stands. Can you go ahead and do something there? the hell the situation? It's hitting on that. Okay, well, kick it in, bud. Kick it in. Kick the jack stand in. Kick it in. What's it hitting on, it's dude? It's hitting on your lines and your bumper brackets. Son of a bitch. There you go. Let it down. It's not. All right, well, then kick it in over on this side. Well, Dylan's dicking around with that. We're going to go ahead and remove our lower control arm from the vehicle. If you look at this angle right here, you can see that you have to use, uh, uh, do you see what I'm using here? You might want to wait a second, dude. Hang on a minute, we got, we got safety uh, problems here. Hang on, Dylan, hold on. Okay, there we go. Now we're safe. Okay, do you see what I'm using here, bud? Do you see the advantage of using a wobble uh -huh. head socket? Right. Okay. Okay, there's that one. Now, we're going to have a problem. You know what the problem is? How to get that bolt out. Well, we got to get this bolt out of here to get this off. So we got to take a subframe bolt out. Give me my red impact with a uh, 14 millimeter. You can see right here there's a bolt that's restricting me from taking out the bolt that I need out. So we're going to have to go ahead and remove that. Now what this bolt is, this is a subframe bolt that bolts to the unibody. So we want to be very careful not to lose that and we're going to go ahead and put it right back in there. I don't think we're going to have to replace the subframe, but you never know. Alright, so we have removed one side of it. Put that in our cup over there. And I think we might have ran into a problem. Uh, maybe not. Let's see what we got here. Because even though we still got to remove this, we're really just working on one section at a time. Leave all them tools out. We're going to need them for the other control arm. But we're going to go ahead and repeat our process. Where's my 15 16 Here we go. We'll go ahead and repeat our process on this side. Taking our impact with our 
What? Wobblehead. Wobblehead. Safety secure wobblehead socket. And one more thing about using this type of a tool. They're really not designed to use uh, long sockets. Okay, they're designed to use short sockets, so be very careful using it on an impact. We'll go ahead and grab that socket here if we can. Okay, that looks like it's going to work. Hand me my hose, Dylan. I don't know, but it looks like... There we go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, then we'll go ahead and get down on this. That ain't going to work, dude. Hold that up. Okay. It looks like we're going to have to remove the rack and painting, dude. That looks like the situation we're going to have. Yep. So, we've run into situations. Now, what we got to do, we got to go ahead and remove our rack and pinion off of the vehicle. Uh, wow, what a fucking joke. Alright, let it down. It's got to come out anyway, fuck it. All right, we went ahead and took the rack out. Now, that was a very extreme job, and it would have took very, very extreme time to show you, so I'm just going to kind of walk it through you and uh, show you what we did to get it out. Basically, if you look right here, we went ahead and uh, took the bolts off. You can see there's a rubber bushing right here. Uh, we need that rubber bushing to put back into the rack. We went ahead and disconnected the steering linkage that was on our uh, front clip that we purchased to loosen that from the rack. And then we had our power steering lines that we had to uh, go ahead and remove. And we disconnected those. And uh, we also disconnected the other tie rod end over on the other side of the vehicle to remove it as well. We then proceeded to take the rack out of the vehicle once that was done, we went ahead and removed the other bolt down here that was holding in our lower control arm. And as we did that, we went ahead and decided to go ahead and replace the ball joint now instead of, uh, you know, letting the owner do it himself. Let's look at it and see what we got. And as you see, we went ahead and replaced the ball joint just like I mentioned. Now, uh, this is a press-in style ball joint. Uh, had to be pressed in. We went ahead and removed the strut assembly and the brake assembly to do that. That's the only way that uh, that can be pressed back in there. And as we look over here, you can see that there, here's our rack. And uh, I noticed that the boots were rotted out. So what we did, we went ahead and bought some brand new tie rod ends for the owner. If I can open that, please. Dylan, thank you. And we'll go ahead and replace those as well. I see that the aftermarket ones are actually grease accessible instead of the factory ones that are sealed. Do you see that down there? Yep. That's a sealed bearing. That's a sealed type ball joint or tie rod end, I might say. And this one here is a greasable tie rod end. So that one needs maintenance versus this one that doesn't need maintenance. So what you're looking at here, you're looking at a real, real mess because now what we got to do, we got to repeat all the process that you just saw us do on the replacement clip. We got to take all of this off and then replace it with the parts that we took off the replacement clip. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, once again, taking the rack off is a very, very technical job. And uh, when we put this back together, I went ahead and called my buddy up at uh, Oliver's Automotive, my buddy Daryl, and I decided that I'm going to go ahead and use a spring compressor to install all this system because the spring is such a large spring and it's got a lot of force on it. And since this car is up in the air, it's a very much safer situation to go ahead and do it right and protect ourselves from danger than to go ahead and just slop everything together and take a chance. Uh, once again, we saw that the uh, strut tower itself can get locked in place up here and can be a very dangerous problem that can occur and can really harm you a lot. These springs are very dangerous in here and I've said the word dangerous how many times now? Seven or eight. So it's very, very important to be precautious and pay attention to everything that you do 
to your vehicle while doing this type of repair. I also noticed that this, uh, the sway bar bolt is bent and twisted and it looks like uh, if we're not real careful, that can break off as well. Here's our tie rod end, if you look real close, that uh, made it all the way up here from the backyard all the way up to the front of the shop. And uh, that's a little uh, lesson that you can learn right there that, uh, you know, set your mind to it and uh, have the positive attitude and you too can get her done. It made it to the shop and once it made it up to the shop, it pretty much went ahead and took a shit on us, but uh, at least it did what we wanted it to do and got it up here in one piece and saved us money. You can see that, there it is right there. So, wow, what a pain in the ass. Yep. So let me re go ahead and remove all of these parts here. Uh, basically the same thing that you just saw. We'll get everything taken off and then we'll come back Look at the damage that uh, we have on our vehicle and go ahead and install everything that needs to be installed. I did notice uh, right here, if you look at this, you can see where this has been drug around in the junkyard. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So we will have to take that apart and uh, fix that, which uh, isn't a pretty sight. I noticed that these are pop riveted on. Did you see that? Yeah. This has got the big daddy uh, quarter inch pop rivets holding this on. Wow. So that's going to be a bitch. So there's a lot of little stuff that you got to do. There's a lot of stuff that you don't really realize has to be done when dealing with a job like this. Plain and simple. I hope everybody's learning out there. I hope everybody is uh, paying attention. Because I'm not doing this for my health, Dylan. Okay? Do you understand? Yep. All right. Let's get all this taken off and let's uh, get it stripped now. Take it easy. We'll see you later. And uh, let's get her done. Plain and simple. Right, turn it off. Put the camera away. Okay. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.